Uh, I'm proud that uh, I think um, my constituents contributed the fourth highest uh, number to the, uh, to the petition. And I think that does reflect um, a growing mood for change uh, in the way that we elect our members of parliament and indeed other parts of the system. Um, we are at the moment facing huge challenges uh, in our politics and at these sort of times it is so important that our politics commands the support of the people. Our democracy is held in high regard and it's here that our electoral system lets us down. The Honourable Member for St Austell and Newquay made a fair attempt um, at defending uh, first past the post but as a system that might have worked in the past rather than one which meets the challenges uh, of today looking at some of its flaws there is uh, and I don't want to kind of name names but there is uh, at the moment a member of this house who was elected with 29% of the votes cast in the last parliament somebody elected with less than 25% of the votes cast, with more than three-quarters of voters not wanting that person to be their representative. Now, there has to be something wrong uh, with a system which produces those sort of results. I should say, reflecting on some of the debates so far, I, I'm struck by the extraordinary absence of irony uh, in which members opposite have described PR as flawed because it leads to a government, to a, a, an election result in which there is no clear winner, uh, and therefore a government determined uh, in, in backroom deals, <laughs> giving disproportionate uh, influence to small parties. I, I think irony is actually quite <laughs> important in politics. Now, the uh, Honourable Member for St Austell and Newquay also casually disregarded this argument about wasted votes, which I think is really quite important. There is no more powerful indictment of our current system um, than the way in which people feel disempowered by their votes being wasted. It's not only that the votes going to losing candidates have no impact on the outcome of the election, but neither do the surpluses um, over the finishing line for the winner. And I say that as somebody who, in sharp contrast with my result in 2010, um, <coughs> actually received, has a, as a majority of just short of 28,000. But that combination of wasted votes meant that between 68% and 74% of votes have been wasted in the last three general elections. Now, the Honourable Member asked... You know, pe people are obviously happy with this. Because he asked the question, why then did they continue to participate in the system? But people found their own way of navigating this flawed system. Thankfully, they didn't, as he suggested that they might, walk away. Instead, they tried to find their own ways of making votes count, increasingly turning to tactical voting. And we've seen increasing numbers also turn to vote trading websites. That's no way to run a democracy. And as many members have also pointed out, political parties know how to navigate it too. It leads to uh, that focus on key marginals and key voter segments within key marginals, which is no way to run a democracy. Now, PR isn't a, a silver bullet, and those of us who are strong advocates for it don't pretend that it is. There are many other ways in which... Our democracy needs to be improved. But we should learn something from the fact that increasing numbers of countries have turned away from first-past-the-post uh, towards more proportional systems. And of the 35 uh, nations in the OECD, more than 80% use some form of PR. And contrary to the kind of lack of imagination that some members opposite have uh, shown, it is possible to have, and most of those countries do, have systems in which there is a constituency link, which retains that vital relationship that so many of us believe in, whilst also allowing for proper uh, proportionality. But the impact of moving to PR goes well beyond voting systems alone, and a number of members have alluded to this. It, 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 it contributes towards changing our political culture, and my honourable friend, the member for Staley Bridge and Hyde, talked about the, his concerns 
about the increasingly damaging way in which tribalism and binary approach to politics is undermining what is a much more nuanced um, political debate within our country. PR moves us from sort of a majoritarian culture to a more consensual approach to our politics. And that has to be something that we should welcome. And it's perhaps therefore no surprise that societies with PR systems, as all the evidence has, has demonstrated, generally have lower income inequality, they have developed welfare systems, they have higher social expenditure, they fare a distribution of public goods, better environmental controls, more effective action on climate change, less likelihood of armed conflict. And, as uh, one on one member pointed out, they have better long-term decision-making. And looking at so many of the big issues that we face as a country, wouldn't that be something that we should be uh, aspiring to? So, Roger, this petition is timely. At a time when confidence in our democracy is not at its strongest, we do need within this House to be open to change. Mo making votes count would make an enormous difference. So let me thank again those who brought the petition to this House. The, and we should recognise, and they should recognise, that it has stimulated a very large number of members to get involved in the issue. Let's, but let's see it as a springboard from which we can build. Yeah.